Hello and welcome to the CX Files podcast. I'm your host, Mark Hillary. In recent months, it's become clear that working from home is going to be an important part of what analysts are calling the new normal, the post-pandemic business environment. As regular listeners will know, I've spoken recently to companies such as 5CA and Officium Labs, who didn't have to change at all when the lockdown started, as they were already 100% work from home. I was recently introduced to Brian Pritchard, the founder and CEO of Live Exchange Corporation. Brian's based in Toronto, Canada, and his company's been offering a virtual contact center solution for the past 18 years. They have a technology platform and a huge network of gig workers, so they can build an entire virtual contact center in days. When we were talking after the recording finished, he told me that a client recently needed a contact center up and running in 10 days. They delivered and that was a center with hundreds of agents. I think that it's this flexibility that's going to be a real part of the new normal. It's not just about working from home, because some people hate working from home. As we emerge from this crisis, we're going to have to build new, agile work environments, and Live Exchange has already been doing this for years. I called Brian at his home to find out how it all works. Okay, Brian, uh, first, let's just check in on, on how you managed to, to ride out the, the pandemic. I mean, like, unlike a lot of the CX companies that, that I've talked to, you know, you don't actually have large contact centers full of agents. So have you avoided most of the disruption all these, these other guys faced? Uh, no. Uh, luckily for us, we, we haven't faced that disruption. Uh, as you may know, Live Exchange has been 100% virtual since we started the company in 2004. And although this pandemic uh, is catastrophic on many levels, and our hearts go out to those that have been personally impacted, uh, our business was not affected. In fact, our business, strangely, our business grew as companies searched for ways to maintain their customer service operations while dealing with this very unfortunate situation. That's interesting. Yeah, you're actually seeing growth. And I guess that that's a lot of companies are looking at you as a company that, that's been working from home, uh, you know, for years anyway. You're not, this is not something new. I mean, analysts are calling this the new normal for business. I mean, do, do you see this, this idea of working from home is a, like a fundamental part of the new normal? Oh, definitely. As a result of the pandemic, we believe that work from home, really, it's gone from a discussion topic for companies I think it's really a must have now. I mean, you have to be able to protect your business and have a strategy to move staff home in the event of a forced shutdown. So companies need to have a continuous support system in place for their customer care operations. That's got to mean work from home is, is part of tomorrow. Okay, and is there a different profile of agent that, that you hire? I mean, like the kind of people that prefer to work from home, is there like um, a different education profile or different ages compared to the, the people that would be hired into a contact center? Yeah, I think it's a, a vast difference between um, the group we see in bricks and mortar and the group we see that works at home. Uh, over the years, my experience has been that you know, CX work, you know, generally we see a younger age group in, in the call center. And uh, for a lot of people, it's the first time job or second job they've had getting their experience in the workforce. And they've grown up at home with their families and they've been in a home all the time. The last thing this person wants is to still be working at home. They want to go out, they want to socialize, they want to meet other people, their friends and social circles that they get involved with. And that's their life. Forcing them to go back into a home environment, I I think from what I've seen, doesn't always work out as well. Uh, Generally what we see from the candidates that we work with that have years of tenure, I mean, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years working from home with the same people, they're 35 plus, Uh, they have some level of of college education for the most part, I think it's about 70, 80% range and they've been out in the workforce. They've done the commute back and forth. They've had their time out in social circles and now they're going, well, I I don't want to do that anymore. I'm more comfortable working from home and not having to get up every day and commute and go back and forth. 
I, I think the older mature person is definitely the majority of the successful work from home candidate in our pools. Okay, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, and and I, mean, I know that you use you deploy a gig economy type uh, model, uh, you know, so where you can supply the platform itself and the agents. Um, you know, in in that kind of business model, how do you ensure that your agents know the products that they're supporting and are able to support specific clients? And and you know, does this kind of model allow a lot more flexibility? Right. So, you know. Knowledge is key, and uh, we all want SMEs on our teams. Uh, the more SMEs you have, the stronger um, you are and your company is when it comes to serving the customer. So what we find is really a lot of the traditional training methods are easily transportable into online. Um, uh, we found the most successful mix in the past has been uh, self-led modules that people can take on their own in their own time before a training course and then a fully instructed training course led by a trainer and if you can imagine this in your mind what we say is you know the enlightened mind is easier to work with so if I give you a self-led module that teaches you how to uh, open up an application bring up a customer record uh, change that customer record and maybe alter it or give a credit or add on to a sale of a product. If I'm doing these types of things in a, in a self-led course module, when I come to meet the trainer in the classroom, I now have some of the basics to use the system. So training me with a trainer now becomes much easier. So we find that combination really works well moving to remote. And when we couple that with the gig economy worker, um, you know, the gig worker is not a salary worker. There's a big difference, what we've seen. The gig worker is generally a self-motivated, entrepreneurial type person that wants to create something for themselves. They want to create um, their own work times. They want to create um, their ability to work more when they want to. Uh, they want to control their earnings as much as they can. And to that end, uh, generally when you're a gig worker, you're being paid for performance. So what we find is that you get a lot of high performing people that will come in for 15, 20 hours a week and they'll be very, very productive um, to the point where they're much more productive than a salaried person. And that success formula of, hey, I wanted to be here, I wanted to learn and I want to learn at my pace, then now I want to earn at my pace. You put those two things together, it's really quite powerful. Yeah, just uh, on that subject then, because that's an interesting point. Do you think that we're going to see more of a focus on productivity and what people actually do and how they perform rather than, you know, the 40 hours a week in the office, nine to five? Yeah, I, I wholly believe we'll see that uh, take place. Um, you know, the way we look at it is if, if someone's working in a productivity-based model and they're working, let's say, 22, 23 hours a week, um, if we were in a hourly paid or, or salary type environment, uh, that productivity of a 22 hour person is really matching up towards a 30, 30 plus person who's being paid per hour with breaks and everything else that they get from that. So the productivity model, I think, gives back to the individual. They're already at home. You know, it's not like they need to take a break at a specific time. They need to take a break when in their schedule they built, they have one scheduled in and they go, they might go away for four hours and then come back um, for an evening rush. Maybe there's an afternoon rush and an evening rush. Uh, it's great for the worker and the flexibility is the bonus that the organization gets from this because now they can move people a little more focused towards their peaks and get them out of the walls in their schedules. Yeah, and I think that that plays into this idea of resilience, you know, because, again, it's another of this the, the kind of business jargon that all the analysts are talking about, the need for resilience. But, but no one's really defining it very well, except saying work from home is a kind of core component of it. But, but how would you define, you know, in addition to just working from home, how do you build a more resilient company? Well, I think this is definitely one of the ways uh, to do that. Um, you know, aside from having 
our networks in place so we can support workers, which, are, which is, of course, critical. You know, having that workforce that has that flex in it that you can bring up and down based on what's happening with the business. I mean, who could have foreseen this pandemic and who could have foreseen the amount of questions our customers would have that they never had before? And all of a sudden, there were giant lineups in the queues, uh, incredible lineups, even companies, circuits overloaded. You just got a busy. You couldn't even get into the queue. So imagine if all of a sudden I could focus my workers and get them there faster, longer, when I need them, when it's really critical. Uh, that brings that level of resilience back into the business. It, it, it just doesn't happen in building. Yeah, what, what are the clients saying to you right now? I mean, are there any new requests or accelerating trends? Right now, I think the, the biggest thing on everyone's mind is uh, things have started to settle down a little bit. And it's more about, it's more about looking to increase uh, the workforce that we've built for many of our clients and, and get it to a point where everyone believes there's going to be a second wave. I even hear people talking about a third wave. I don't know if there'll be slow waves or massive waves, who knows, but they want to be ready this time. So what we're seeing is um, more requests around strategy, strategy for staffing the event of in, in getting more people um, from the gig economy contracted into their organization so that they can have the flex. Um, a lot of our clients, we had one client that sent uh, 250 people home with their computers and they, they had a small pilot working with us. Well, Today, we're probably 12, 14 weeks on. Out of the 250 people, there's only about 115 people left as employees that actually have stuck it out. They've said, I don't want to do this from home. Um, I'm going to take the government assistance. I'm not going to work. And, or they've just disappeared. So the big ask is help us change. Help us get ready to support the business of the future. Um, I think we're all going to learn what that looks like together. Yeah, and I mean, of course, you don't, you're not running a large contact center, but, but obviously you're in this business. You, you must talk to some of the people who are doing that. I mean, how are, the, how are they, those guys going to cope? How are they going to bring people back into large centers when you know, all the time we're hearing about social distancing? That's going to be an interesting project, I would think. I can only imagine what the floor plan reconfiguration would look like um, for social distancing and proper responsibility for the well-being and health of the employees, as well as the organization. I mean, you know, you, we all know floor plans were designed to fit um, the maximum amount of people in a comfortable environment as we can um, because of the high cost of real estate and, uh, and space. Uh, now, what do you do? Cut down the workforce by half in the building that's allowed in at a time? Or that's it's going to be a costly adventure, um, very costly. Yeah, I mean, and leading on from that, and just just to sort of close this out, I mean, do you think that we're looking at cloud and platform-based solutions being even more important for businesses because of this pandemic? And and how does that affect a company like your own? Yeah, they, they must be, um, and they will be for certain. Uh, cloud, uh, you know, we all learned about virtualization a few years back, and that became the new push. Everyone's got to virtualize all their server environments and all their environments so they can scale quickly and bring up new instances. And that was fantastic for us. And then the cloud takes over, and now it's just gone to the next level. If you're not able to virtualize in the cloud, really, you're, you're going to have a problem in the future. I mean, what do you do when your staff can't even get into a building to access your networks and you're not set to remote in and do everything? I um, mean, you can't scale. It's, it's, not, it's not going to be that easy sometimes to go and, and say, well, we've got to go get a bunch of servers and put them in our data center and expand this footprint. You know, that, that's old. That's history. The cloud is the future. We've We've basically done an Amazon uh, setup uh, and the Microsoft Azure setup for our company. And uh, we run both cloud systems. 
Um, we see advantages um, different from each one. They're both amazing. Um, and we'll, we'll never turn back. Uh, we were in multiple data centers and now we have one left. And honestly, I don't think we're too far away from seeing it uh, be shut down. Thanks for listening to the CX Files podcast. Please take a moment to review the podcast because this helps other listeners to find it. And if you have any suggestions, then get in touch with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm at Mark Hillary with two L's or just search Google for Mark Hillary. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.